Number one, um, before we get started, I want to thank everybody who donated tonight. The money collected from this class is going to an orphaned bride to help her get married. And actually, that is a Jewish dating secret because it's a special segula. It's a special omen to support a couple in need or a bride in need. And Hashem will support you on your journey, on your dating journey. So if you ever hear of a couple in need, it's, a, it's not always that you have people that are in need when they're getting married. And so if you find the couple in need, just give them some money. And especially if you give them um, money beyond their, beyond your means, that's a very special segula, a very special omen for you to be able to get married. Next, just a little announcement. I believe that the best way to meet someone is through a shared experience. And we are starting to host a series of Zoom curated events. And the first series of these Zoom events, they're gonna feature 10 men and 10 women. And the first series is called Speed Dating Trivia. It's gonna happen on February 18th and February 20th. There's going to be two different events, one for singles 25 to 38, and another for singles that are 39 plus. Right now, there is six spots available in the 25 to 38 and four spots available in the 39 plus. It's going to be hosted by the famous No Joe Trivia. They're an amazing trivia group. They kind of make like this, they have this idea of a dating game meets Jeopardy. They host these live events, it's really fun. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna put you and another person in a, in, a, in, a, in a breakout room together and you're gonna be able to answer trivia questions. You're gonna be able to meet. I just put it in, you'll see right above over there, you have the links to the two Eventbrite events. There's only a few spots left. And so I encourage you, and there's gonna be many more of these types of curated events because this is really a lot of what I'm thinking about and where my focus is, is I think that shared experiences and curated events are the best way during this Corona time to be able to meet people. The other thing I wanna tell you is if you haven't and you don't have a profile in J Montreal, use my special marketing code, it's Rabbi's Gift, it's free. Right now, we've just signed on three new matchmakers. So one of, it's really my main focus during this, this COVID time is getting people to meet each other. I've signed on three new matchmakers. There's already 30,000 singles all over North America in the database, and we will help you find your match. And if you're outside North America, you can use jmatchmaking.com. And that's also part of our network. So we're happy to be able to, to do that. Um, one more thing. And tonight, I wanted tonight's event to be highly, highly interactive. And the way we're going to do it is the following. If you look at your profile, you can go click on your thing and you can have, you can change your name. It's called rename. You can rename yourself. And what I want you to do is I know that first of all, majority of the people here are single and there's a tremendous amount of magic in the air when you get us all together. So next to your name, I want you to either put an A in front of your name, which means I'm available or an NA, which means I'm not available. So that way, if somebody wants to reach out and private message you during this event, they can private message you and you can actually meet and while this whole event tonight is going on. So if you don't want to meet someone tonight because you're taken or you're available, um, you can put an NA in front of your name or you can put an A, which means you're available or you can do what Dan just did and put there and say available for dating like single, boom. So yes. And that way everybody can know you're available and maybe you never know. Oh, Dan wanted me to clarify. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, A for available, NA, C, very good. Um, that way you never know. Say, even look, some people are writing in the chat available for dating, beautiful. Um, if, you wanna, if you wanna put in the chat, because um, people are watching it, you wanna put uh, just like a little line about yourself, your age, your 
religious orientation, whatever it is, you never know. Look at that. Available. I'm in New York looking for a guy 28 to 39. I'm 34. This is fantastic. You never know. There's magic in the air. This is the beautiful part of all this. Okay, and please continue. I see some of your anonymous questions coming in. Continue sending me your anonymous questions because we're going to get to them very, very soon. This is um, amazing. I'm going to right now talk for about 40 minutes. After I talk for the 40 minutes, we're going to have an open q and I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself. I'm going to allow you to submit your questions. I will take priority of the questions that I get during the, during the class because I want to give that, uh, I want to give that ability to, to everyone to be able to question during the class. And then I will allow you to unmute yourself and we're going to have an open conversation. And this is going to be a lot of fun this evening. Let's get the party started. So first and most important, I want you to start thinking about a couple of things. The first thing I want you to think about is what would, what would be successful? If I would say that you're gonna finish the next 40 minutes of me talking and I was successful in your mind, what would that be? What will I have shared with you? Besides the fact that I see so many of you are so excited about, um, about being able to meet each other, but what can I tell you? You hear Jewish dating secrets. We're going to get soon to your secrets. What can I tell you? And you can private message me or you can put it in the chat. Please, what, what can I tell you that you don't know already? I mean, come on, really? So many of us have been dating for so long. Don't we know everything there is to know about dating? We should be professional daters by now. Why am I the one giving the lecture? Each one of you can give this lecture by yourself. And what I did tonight, and I'm gonna send this again to you. It's a mentee. For those of you who didn't have a chance, then please take Take this opportunity to get, the, the, to get the link here. And this is your last opportunity because I'm gonna be showing you the answers in a second. Please go there in one or two words. I want you to write, what do you think? What is your piece of dating advice for the world? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share this with you on the screen so you can see. Um, what so many of you have written, and we're going to talk about this for a second. So the question is, what is your Jewish dating secret that you'd like to share in one or two words? And we have so many amazing secrets here. I'm going to share this with you. The, our most popular secret is be yourself. And I love that. It's so important. Dating is not a game. It's not a game. It's not, oh, I'm, a, you know, we got to put on my best face. Absolutely not. Dating is a real experience. And because dating is a real experience, what I want you to think about is if you're gonna start your dating experience off with a lie, well, where is it gonna go from there? That's not gonna be good. So I think the best advice that we've been given here tonight, and I agree with this advice is be yourself. Just be yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry that, you, that you're not going to be this, you're not going to be that. Just be yourself. Have an open mind. Absolutely. So often we go into these experiences with our arms folded in front of us. We have a closed mind. We're not allowing the experience to happen. And so, yes, I understand that some of you may have had your heart broken. I'm sorry, though this is not a therapy session, but I'm sorry for you. But open mind and open heart is so important. And our next most popular one is be kind. Yes, be kind. And I'm just gonna go through a couple of the other ones because it's so interesting. Be realistic, vulnerability, absolutely. Whoever said that, that was a great piece of advice. Be vulnerable. You cannot allow, we're talking about two people who are going to mold and create a life together. We need to be vulnerable. Compassionate, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Alessandra, for your annotations. And anyone else that wants to annotate can annotate. You can sticker this thing up with pleasure. We don't want to 
We don't want to, you know, if you know that up, up on top, there's a button called annotate and you can enjoy this, this session here. Generous spirit, be forgiving, positivity, be honest, have a great aura. These are fantastic pieces of advice. This advice came from you. Be balanced. Thank you. Respect, be true, be genuine. Honesty, I see a lot of different forms of honesty. Control your emotions, tolerance, commitment. Be optimistic, kind. Always be yourself. Be patient, don't rush. Exactly. Right before we started this class, I was talking to someone and, I was, and they were asking me a question. I said, so often we don't think about the fact that when you meet someone, you're not going right to the chuppah. So you can't expect, oh, is this one for me? No, amazing. Like, would you make a choice about your career like that or your education like that? Yes or no, just like that? Speed dating? This is not a speed dating world. What I want you to think about is how you can take yourself out of the speed dating thing and just think when you date someone, just think for a moment. Am I going from step zero to step one? When I see that person, when I meet that person, when I go on that date, is it, am I interested? Do I wanna see them again? That's all you want for the beginning. So one of the problems I see often, and it's a question that I've been asking myself quite a bit because it's an issue that I see quite often, is do we know how to get from the hookup culture, from meeting someone, from the first date, from that first moment into a third and fifth and sixth date. Which means I see so often that the second and third and fourth date is not happening, not because they're not right for each other, not because you're not right for each other, but because you didn't have the right understanding and knowledge in order to be able to push it along, to move it along. And I've said this so many times, but I'm going to say it again. I think women's lib did so much great greatness to the world, so much goodness in the world. I mean, there's no question. Women in the workplace, women, I mean, the, the, I can go on and on, and I'm sure we can all go on and on. But it messed up one thing. It messed up the nuclear family. And today, we are having a big problem as a result of it. Many of us have been raised with that, so we don't know. What used to be innate to our grandparents, what used to be obvious 50 years ago, 40 years ago, it's not obvious anymore. And our parents who lived through a lot of that, well, maybe they also knew. Whether they made the choice or not to go by it, they knew. But today, we have to learn it. It's not innate. It's not obvious. I'm going to tell you something right now, and I don't think it's obvious to you, but I want to just finish this. I have this up here. Um, manage expectations, be optimistic. This is really great. I mean, this is, this is an amazing piece of advice. And, and thank you for all of your dating secrets and your, um, your ideas. Thank you very much. So what I, there's so many things that used to be obvious to our parents and our grandparents that are not obvious to us. And it's okay. And that's one of the reasons I think that we're all here. We're all here because it's not obvious anymore. It used to be, of course, what do you mean? I know how to date. Today, we don't know how to date. We just don't know. And I want you to think to yourself, ask yourself the question, do I know the process? And don't just say, yeah, it's obvious. Do I know the process of going from a first date to a second, to a third, to a fourth? What do I do? And if you don't, Make a list, I gotta learn that. And start thinking to yourself of your past relationships and ask yourself really honest, wholesome, real questions. Be real with yourself. Do I know blank, blank, blank? Maybe, maybe, did this happen in my life because I didn't know how to go to the next level? I didn't know what to do with it. The, 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 the nature is that men should pursue women. 
I know that we live in a society that is full of equality, but I think some things are not all equal. I think women still today expect that men should pursue them. So now, do I know how to pursue a woman? If you're a man, you have to ask that question, yourself a question. If you're a woman, you have to ask yourself the question, do I know how to be pursued? These are, they seem so basic and they seem so fundamental. But what I'm saying is I'm giving you permission because I think that no one's given us permission in this society to say that it's not innate. We may not know how to do this. They used to know how to do it, but I'm not sure that we know how to do it. And there's something else. And for some of you who have heard me before, you, you hate when I say this, but I'm gonna say it again. We are the common denominators in all of our failed relationships. It's all my fault. Whatever has happened to you in the past, I know it takes two to be in the relationship, but you just have to say it. It's my fault. I was also in the relationship. It wasn't just them. We're so easy to shift the blame. Stop shifting the blame. It's all my fault. Whatever circumstances you're in are because of the choices you've made. And that's okay. Start off from where you are. Don't get down on yourself. Just start off from where you are. It's because of the choices that you've made. Don't blame your past relationships. Don't blame your childhood. It's no one else's fault but yours. It's your life. And my greatest wish to you is that you take control of it. So let's talk about some dating secrets. Number one, in case you haven't been following the other four that I just spoke about. But number one, I think we're dating for the wrong reasons. Dating is the opposite of marriage. People who are into dating never get married. And if they do, they'll probably get divorced because if you get comfortable with dating, then when you get married, you end up really confused because you spend so much time building up all your dating mechanisms. So here, I'm kind of going against my own words because I just said, we don't know how to date. And now I'm saying, if you know how to date too well, then you're not gonna get married. Yes, dating is an education and it's something you have to know how to do. And I'm not discounting that, but it's not the only thing because eventually you're gonna have to forget about dating and you're gonna have to be married. Because dating, everything you need for dating is exactly the opposite of everything you need for marriage. Once upon a time, eh, not long ago, people would date for love. People would date for permanence. They would date for commitment. And today, it's entertainment. Today, it's recreation. Going on a date is supposed to be entertaining. It's time to forget about life and have a good time. But what are the ramifications? What are the ramifications of what is effectively a 10-year job interview? Can people cordon off their 20s? A decade of being evaluated by the opposite sex and still emerge whole and unscarred? I mean, I'm sick of people who are taking themselves too seriously. Dating needs to be educated, but it needs to be pleasurable. You have to go out and have fun and make sure the other person's having fun. Sometimes people will come back from a date and they're all excited. It was amazing. It was the best date they ever had. And I know when I speak to the other person on the date, they're going to say it was the worst thing they ever had. So you have to make sure that you're both having a good time. And what's funny is, ironically, the harder you try to succeed at dating, the more apt you're gonna fail. The less you try to impress the date, the less you try to impress on a date, the more you eventually will. You just have to let go. You have to be yourself and you have to allow the full vibrancy of your personality to manifest. Why? So often I see people showing just one side of their personality. Why are we just showing one part of our personality? 
Why aren't we allowing ourselves to be who we are? Just be natural. This could be a person that you can be spending the rest of your life with. And don't put the pressure on, oh my gosh, this could be the one, blah, 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 blah. That's not what we're saying. But we want to see your whole personality. We want to see who you are. There, there's nothing more off-putting than arrogance. The most attractive thing about a person on a date is a sense of humor and maybe being filthy rich. But if you're not filthy rich, then you should probably have a good sense of humor. So when, when you date, you have to ask yourself before you even start, why am I dating? And, and you have to, you can answer it in so many different ways. You can answer it because I want to have fun because I want to have an enjoyable day. Why not? You can say, I want a relationship, but not a commitment. That's fine. Then at least you're being honest with the person and you're not going to just string them along. You can say, I'm evaluating members of the opposite sex for a possibility of a lifelong commitment and marriage. Okay, good. That means you're serious. Wonderful. Or you could say, I'm writing a blog about relationships. Whatever it is, it's important that at least you started off with honesty, that you started off from a place that you know that you are showing the full vibrancy of your personality and you're being honest. For me, being a matchmaker and being a relationships counselor and speaking to so many singles over the years, it's given me a lot of opportunity to observe the modern dating scene. I mean, I know you're saying, oh, there's the rabbi with the beard, but the truth is that I have lived and I've watched hundreds of couples and singles. And what I witnessed mostly is an unbelievable lack of confidence. People today seem to have no belief in themselves. And this causes all kinds of confusion. It causes heartache. It causes the stress, unneeded stress in their search for love. If you're not confident, fake it. So I just went against what I said. I said, be honest and be real and show your whole personality. Yeah, but sometimes you are confident. You're not really faking it. You're just pretending to fake it so that you can think that you're faking it. You're faking it for yourself. There's a very beautiful Hasidic adage that says, anar nar for those of you who know Yiddish. It means a fool just fools themselves. So generally, you're not having that confidence. It's not really about you. It's about you putting a per particular persona for the other person, for the person that you're looking at, for the experience that you're having. People sometimes find it impossible to muster up the courage to simply introduce themselves, to be able to talk normally. I mean, I remember hearing in all the different parties, how I miss the parties, right? We all miss the parties. I, I used to hear ridiculous things. I remember at one of the parties, yes, I heard this. Someone said, well, a guy walks over to a girl, good start, guys should be walking over to girls. That's how you start to get to know each other. And he says to her, I hope you know CPR because you take my breath away. Really? Is this what it's all coming to? This is what it is? Come on. That's all I hear all day now. Come on. We think we have to come along with all these bells and whistles. We have to say smart things. We have to wear the right clothes. We have to have an awesome job. We have to be unbelievably thin. We have to own a cool pet and make sure that it's in our profile picture because, oh, the girls, they love the pets in order for someone to be interested in us. But really, I'm going to tell you the secret. The most attractive quality to the opposite sex is self-confidence. Just be yourself. Self-confidence doesn't mean being the coolest guy on the block or the coolest woman on the block. It just means being true and honest to yourself. And how do we do that? 
because I know that's probably what you're thinking, it's achieved when we start to feel good about the direction of our lives. And not because we have a beautiful face and not because we have a bulging bank account, but because we are simply, simply and quietly confident in our ability to contribute something positive to life. That's what it is. Someone just asked me privately, what is a good conversation starter? And I'm gonna drop a pearl of wisdom right now that if there's one thing that you learn tonight, I think this is very important. What we need when we first go on dates and usually going on dates is this like, the beginning is like this job, uh, you know, oh, where are you from? Who are you? What's your name? Da, 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 da. I want to change all that. I want to change that into positive, emotional, qualifying questions, which means if you're going to ask a question, especially on a first date or when you first get to know someone, you want it to be a positive question. So there's two rules to make to a positive question on a date. The first one is make sure there's only a positive answer to the question, which means when you ask somebody a question like, um, um, oh, you know, where are you from? Where are you from is a broad, vague question. You think it is, oh, I'm from Montreal or I'm from Chicago. That's easy. But what about the kind of experiences that it conjures up? So you wanna make sure that every question you ask is a positive qualifying question. And number two, and this is what I think is even more important than the positive question, make sure it's specific enough that there's a positive memory attached to it. You see, what you're doing, and I'm giving you a little secret here. I'm telling you, this is, a, this, is, this is a pearl that will probably take you very far in your next dating experience. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to create lasting, positive, emotional memories with someone. Well, the best way to create lasting, positive, emotional memories is to start off with positive, emotional memories. So if you ask them, what's your favorite memory from childhood? You could ask them, do you have any memories from childhood? That would be an open question. It could be positive, it could be negative. But what if you ask them, what's your favorite memories from childhood? And all of a sudden, they're going to tell you about their favorite Passover Seder, or they're going to tell you about this moment that they had with their pet turtle. And it's going to get your, they're going to feel these endorphins, and they're going to get smiley, and they're going to get happy, and everything's going to feel all rosy for a moment. And that is going to be associated with this experience that's happening right now, the dating experience. So all of a sudden, this dating experience becomes a positive experience. What's your favorite Purim party? Don't ask them what was your, you know, tell me about a Purim. Purim is coming up, that's why I mentioned it. No, what's your favorite? What you wanna do is connect your previous positive emotional experiences with your current and God be willing your future emotional experiences. So that's my little gem there for you. Don't forget that one. Someone just asked, what's the difference between a partner and a soulmate? So what I think is that today, too few people date in order to find their soulmate. Instead, they search for a partner. And because of a, a fundamental confusion in priorities, what happens is these people want to find a person who will provide them with many different and mostly superficial things, rather than a companion who's gonna connect with them on the deepest, most profound level. I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. I believe there's only one thing that you should be looking for when you're dating. And I know people come to me with these long, laundry lists of things that are looking for. And I can't, I mean, it's, it's, it gets more preposterous as the years go on. My gosh, I think I've heard it all. You know what I heard recently? And this one just, just shocked me to the core. Somebody, and I, I'm sorry if you're here, but I just, I'm, and, if, and if you are here, I just want you to know how, how, how preposterous it is. Somebody said they only will date a woman with a gummy smile. 
what does that mean? I mean, I guess it means that when they smile, it shows gum. What the heck does that have to do with a long lasting and loving relationship? All of these things that we have become so attached to, oh no, it has to be this kind of career and it has to be this kind of height and it has to be this kind of, please, can we get serious? One thing COVID has done and let's call it for what it is. Let's be real for a moment with ourselves. And I know it's gonna be hard for you to hear this, but there's one thing that COVID has done. It's made us real. And there's only one thing that I believe that you should be looking for in a long lasting partner. And that is someone who will love you for who you are and bring an end to your loneliness. We are lonely. We used to pretend that we weren't lonely by going out every night. Well, now we can't go anywhere. So now our loneliness is looking at us in the mirror. And you're not looking for this and you're not looking for that and you're not looking for age and you're not looking for all your long laundry list of things. You're just looking for someone who will love you for who you are and make you feel like the greatest person that ever lived. That's it, that's it. All of the other things, they're extraneous and they are not even an iota, an iota as important as an end to our loneliness. So are we looking for a partner or a soulmate? I mean, if someone wants to go into business and doesn't want to take on the huge project alone, then they're going to need a partner. They expect their partner to match their contribution. They expect their partner to match their money, their toil, their creativity, their enterprise. And for this, the partner will have an equal share in the business. But marriage, okay, I'm not gonna use the big M word. Relationships are not a partnership. In a partnership, if one is not articulate as the other, no problem, because one partner will be more articulate and the other one won't be. One partner says I'm good at some things and the other partner says I'm good at other things. So I'll put in 40 hours a week into sales and you'll put uh, 40 hours a week into accounts. So now we have what I'm gonna call a complementary partnership. That's not what we're looking for. And I think this is how most people are going about dating. The first thing they try to do is determine that marriage, I'm not gonna use the big M word, I'm sorry, that long lasting relationships is a business that requires two people. And since I'm only one person, well, I need someone else. And what kind of partner should I find? Well, someone who can either match or at least complement my contribution. And all that men and women today aspire to in these long-term relationships is to simply find a partner. Now, do these people not find their soulmates? They're not even looking for their soulmates. A soulmate is the other half of our soul. It's the part of our soul. And I'm not trying to romanticize it because I don't believe in the fireworks either. You know, I always say, I wish people say, oh, I'm, you know, didn't, didn't get the spark. There was no spark. I just want to, you know, I want to go and hide on the date. I mean, today we're all Zoom dating, but I wish, you know, in the old days when we were dating in coffee shops or wherever we were dating, I want to go behind the other person's chair and take a little firework and light it. So that way, boom, the firework goes off and we can see the sparks because I don't believe in the sparks either. The sparks will come if you have the right intention, if you become, and somebody said it so perfectly before, if you become vulnerable, if you put yourself out there, yes, there's a chance your heart will be broken and maybe it'll be broken again, but you got to give up yourself. This is a relationship. You're looking for a way to end your loneliness. You're looking for the, the other half of your soul. You're looking for someone who can really be there for you, mind, body, and spirit. That will take you being there for them. And so I go into the next part of our conversation. To find the perfect soulmate, how do we do it? To find the perfect soulmate, we need to focus on what, not what we have. 
because that's not going to tell us not what I'm looking for, but what I lack, what is missing. The way people today look at marriage, the way people today look at long-term relationships is by sitting down, making a list of everything they have to contribute to a relationship. So the man says, I'm good looking, I'm well-educated, I come from a good family, I have a good sense of humor, I have a great job. So I'm looking for the same and other, so to speak. I'm looking for someone who at least is going to bring the same contribution. Someone who's pretty, someone who's highly educated from a great family. Otherwise, what does he say? I'll be settling down. I hate that term. What does it mean anyway? Settling down? What do you think this is? How do you know what's down and what's up? So although this is the most common form of modern dating. I think it's the foolish form of modern dating. Dating should never begin with what we have. It needs to begin with what we lack. You don't go into a relationship because you have something. You go into a relationship because you're missing something. And only by identifying that one big thing that you're missing, for example, loneliness, you're guaranteed to find someone who actually makes you feel whole. And that's what you're looking for. In other words, although the partner, so to speak, brings many things, all of those things are superficial. But a soulmate, on the other hand, brings you only one thing. And that is the most vital thing of all. It's an end to your loneliness and a feeling that you are the most special person in the entire world. And that's really what we want. Why are we making it so complicated? Why are we adding so much more onto it that doesn't need to be there? Why don't we just cut away all the garbage and go right to the essence? And I'm gonna tell you this, and I really truly believe it. When you are really ready to get married, you're going to meet someone to marry. Maybe I'll say that again for you. When you're really ready for real, not with all the BS, when you're really ready to get married, you'll meet someone who you can marry. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some of the questions you've asked me throughout um, the, this discussion. I'm gonna start off with those questions. And afterwards, I'll allow you to unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and we're going to have um, a little conversation for about an hour or so. And this should be fun. It's always a lot of fun, these open conversations. And obviously, um, it, you can also be, feel free to, to comment in the, in the chat box or send me a private chat so you can decide to be um, in public or you can be anonymous and I will keep you anonymous. Okay, question number one, how do we meet our soulmate? How do we meet our soulmate? Well, before you understand how to meet your soulmate, I think you probably want to know what a soul is and what a mate is. This is what I've seen. I've been involved in a lot of people's lives. And a lot of people who have said that they would never get married, they've gotten married. And they got married when they had this mind shift. Something changed in their life. It could have been an emotional change. It could have been a physical change. It could have been a spiritual change. Something changes. And part of that change is that in their life is their soul, their mind, their heart, they become a little more in sync. So, so often we want one thing, but we're attracted to something else. You know, I want that, but, but 
my, you know, my, my mind knows that that person is wrong for me. And we get into these relationships over and over again. And it's the wrong person because my mind knew that, but my heart, oh my gosh, I'm so attracted to them. I can't help it. My heart just says the other, the other way. I'm just attracted to them. And so we need to have this heart and mind in sync. Our, we, we can't have where our mind knows that it's wrong, but our heart is attracted to someone else. And so often we want one thing and we're attracted to something else. So if you want one thing and you're attracted to something else, what happens? The person who could be your soulmate would be right in front of you and you have no idea. There's this study that came out from the University of Michigan about three years ago. I've spoken about it a few times because it shocked me. And it said that by the time someone is 35 years old, they will have met four people they could have married. Four people that you could have married. Can you imagine? So why didn't you marry them? Because you weren't ready, maybe. I don't know. But that acknowledgement is so powerful. It could be that you weren't ready, and that's fine. I don't want to go back in time because that's not going to help anybody. We're going forward. We're here today. Nobody said you had to be ready today. But if you want to know how to meet your soulmate, make sure you're ready for it because it could be that it's one of those four. You don't want that to happen today. And for the people that say we'll never be ready, you'll never be ready. It's true. You'll never be ready. But you try to be the, the best you can ready. You know, you just, you want to be in the right space. Remember, you're trying to meet your compliment. You're trying to meet the person who would end your loneliness, who would be there for you, who, would, who, who will who allow you to be yourself. And, and being in that right space is getting in touch with your soul. Spiritually, the things that you do, this class being here tonight is a great start, but there's much more than just this. You have to get in touch with your soul. And once you're in touch with your soul, then you have to start thinking about what you're looking for. How do you know what you're looking for? Well, for those of you who haven't filled out my four-part questionnaire, message me after today's class, rabbi at jewishmdg.com, and I will send you the four-part um, questionnaire. And you can fill that out, and that will help you to know what you're looking for. And I'll just give you just kind of a spoiler alert. A lot of that has to do not necessarily with what you're looking for, but what you can bring and what you can give. Someone asked, what does the compliment mean? I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into matchmaking. Compliment means that if you're an introvert, there's a good chance that you're probably going to be well suited for an extrovert. And if you're an extrovert, there's a good chance that you're probably going to want to be well suited for an introvert. And that's complimentary. It makes sense. Look, if you're both extroverts, you'll never be in the house. And if you're both introverts, you'll never be out of the house. So there's got to be a balance in life. And there's so many other, there's actually five, it's called the big five. And I've spoken about this in this forum before. And there's, you know, five different personality traits. And usually the, the, the match will be on different ends of the personality traits. One of them is open to experience versus closed to experience. One will be more intellectual. One will be more emotional. And what you want is that the two of you together make a full picture. So if you look at the big five as a, as a, as a full picture, then you're going to both kind of be on either ends of the big five so that you can kind of create that big picture yourself. One, um, anyway, that's just to, to, to give you a couple of examples. Okay. Um, how do you know if the relationship that you're in is the right one? Okay. Um, so the right one meaning that you're in a relationship and I guess you want to go, you want it to go to the next level. So how do you know it's right? Well, it's a big question. Obviously it's a personal question. Um, I don't know if there's a blanket answer for that, but what I do believe is that when you're dating, it shouldn't be a survey. You shouldn't just, oh, start telling all your friends, oh, I'm dating this one, I'm dating that one doesn't work that way. There should be three people in your life while you're dating. And it's so important. It's not my own words. This comes from the Rebbe. And that is number one, you need to have a friend, someone who you can bounce off, you know, the experience, because it's very emotional. There's a lot of emotions that come up. 
Number two, you want a mentor, somebody you respect and you will listen to their advice. It's not a survey, someone who you respect and you listen to their advice. And I would say most important is the matchmaker, somebody who can be the in-between between the two of you and can help push the relationship along. along. And I think that those three people to the exclusion of everybody else. Because if you start having too many people, then there's too many voices in your head and it's already so emotional and there's already so much stuff going on. And you wanna to try to get some of those voices out of your head. You wanna to try to have clarity and not be more um, complicated. So, um, okay. What else? A lot of people uh, ask, okay. Um, okay, you know what? If you asked your question all the way up, can you, uh, in the chat, can you just repost it? Cause I'm just gonna go through some of these questions. I'm not gonna go all the way back to the beginning of the chat. Sorry about that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna unmute you guys soon so we can do some live questions also here. Um, okay, here's an anonymous question. I find it hard that guys don't go for plus size women because guys that are plus size are dating the skinny girls. I've also been told that I'm too smart for some. I have two master's degrees. I also live in the US in a small state that guys don't want to travel from the nearest big city about an hour away to where I live. Two other states border my state and I don't mind traveling that far. Okay. so. So I, I, I want to try to unpack this the best I can. Number one, there's a lot of generalizations there. I find this very often with singles, um, even though obviously I have to generalize because I'm talking to a lot of people, but now I'm talking to you because you asked the question and you're talking to me or you're talking to a specific individual person that you're going to date and don't generalize. Okay, so um, we're not looking for guys, just one. And it could be that there are many guys who do go for skinnier women and maybe they think they are, but they're not. But there's just one person. You just wanna find one person for yourself. What, what this tells me, what this question tells me is that you are putting barriers in front of yourself. And I see this so often with singles. You're just putting all these barriers in front of yourself. You don't need to put those barriers in front of yourself. You're okay. Don't be confident, be who you are. If, you, if that's the person you are, be strong of who you are. There's many plus size women who have gotten married and been in very happy relationships. There's somebody out there for you. And just, you don't have to just exude that confidence. Uh, you know, so you, are you too smart for some? Okay, if you're too smart for some, then that's not the right person for you, but you're gonna find someone who you're not too smart for. And and you say that you live in a, in a, in a small state and you don't put all these things. So yes, and I know that there's all these different ramifications that people have, but I, what I'm saying is don't put so many barriers in front of yourself. And you may have to be flexible also. It sounds to me like you're not flexible either. So you're, you, it sounds like you're very stubborn. Maybe you wanna stay there. Well, you may have to be a little more flexible because it could be that the guy lives somewhere else and you're gonna to have to go there. Or maybe he's gonna be flexible, he's gonna to come to you. But what I'm saying is that it's a fluid experience. Don't get stuck this, that, or the other way. It's fluid, let it be, okay? How do I date virtually during COVID when I can't travel between states, Canada and the US? It's a big problem with COVID. I see a lot of really great dating going on virtually. Look, we're here, you're in your house and we're all safe during COVID. We're all having this experience right now. It, yeah, it's, is, it, is it not the same? Actually, I think it's better because so often, you know, I always talk about touch that touch is something that confuses lust and love. So I think it's really great to start off a relationship by, by actually getting to know someone on a Zoom date or on a FaceTime or on Skype or on Google chat or however you wanna do it through the internet. And then you don't have to worry about that, you know, that confusion of lust and love. So I think, and, and I'm a huge fan of of starting off that way. And then you'll see where the relationship develops. Then you can be vulnerable. Maybe it's easier for you if you're an introvert and maybe easier for you to be vulnerable behind the screen. Just a thought for you. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. 
Lots of questions, lots of, okay. Would you wait for your soulmate after years of searching or remain alone? I don't know what the nature of that question is. It sounds really loaded to me. So my answer to you is I would have to know more um, because it sounds, once again, I'm going to say what I said to the last person, sounds like you're putting barriers in front and that's fine. You're trying to protect yourself. God bless you, but it's not going to, it's not going to get you anywhere if you're looking to, to date somebody. Um, how does one know that it's time to move on to the next date? <laughs> Just be honest with yourself. Say the thing. Don't be scared. How do you know? And there's so many ways you can know. If you are on a date with someone and they're not interested, you can ask them, um, are, are you not interested? Are you just you know, here because you're trying to make me happy? It's not a game. It's real, two real people having a real experience. And, and I know that it sounds crazy because oh, it's a dating game. It's not the dating game. It's a real experience that real people are having. And I think it's so important that it continuously be the real experience and not this fake you know, game and not real and not proper. Somebody said, I think people put all of that up because they fear and they and the what if. Absolutely. You know, it's very hard to be vulnerable. It's very hard to put yourself in a situation where you can get your heart broken. It's terrible. Um, can you elaborate on the signs that tell you that you're ready? Sure. So it depends on what those signs are. There's spiritual signs, there's intellectual signs, there's emotional signs. Number one, I'll just go with the basics. Emotionally, um, John Gottman, John and Julie Gottman, they are uh, great. They are probably the foremost scientists when it comes to relationships. They've written a number of books. I'm a big fan of theirs. And they say that when, if you are getting over a relationship, you need a month for every year that you were in the relationship. So, and that includes, and I'm going to say this for some of you who know exactly what I'm talking about. That includes if the relationship's in your head. There are some people who date people in their head for years. The other person has no idea they're in a relationship with that person, but you're in a relationship. So any kind of relationship with it you're in, you need some time to get over the last relationship. So emotionally, you have to be in a space that you're ready. Intellectually, you have to know. You have to, you know, and you can go through my, my four-part questionnaire that I'll send you. You have to know. And then spiritually, which I think is the most important, is you have to do what we call in... In, in, in Jewish spiritual terms, making a vessel. You have to be able to make a vessel. Making a vessel is, can be done in many different ways. Um, I, I talked about one earlier, it's giving to a needy bride, um, especially beyond your means, um, taking on some kind of mitzvah, taking on a good deed, taking on something, helping someone, doing something that's out of your comfort zone. That's really, that, that, that's a great mitzvah, taking on some kind of, uh, some kind of spiritual spe something and say, this is in honor of me trying to find my basheret, for me trying to find that one. Just kind of changing. Look, if you've been doing it all the same for all these years, what I'm just saying is, let's do something different. This is COVID times. What's great about this is this is the hard reset of our lives. This is the hard reset of society. Finally, we can just have permission that whatever was doesn't have to be anymore. And you can just reset and say, yes, this is what I'm going to do. And so, and there's many other things you can do spiritually that we can talk about on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I do have uh, a couple of sessions available if anybody needs some private coaching and counseling to dating coaching. I'm happy to, uh, to make that available for you. And you can just email me once again, rabbi at jewishmdg.com and I'll take care of that. Okay. Um, people say you will know when it's the right person. Do you agree? Not always. I don't, there are some people who are really lucky. It's their muzzle. It's their luck that it just kind of clicks and it happens. I don't think that that's so common or as common anymore. Yes, if you ask them three years after they're married or for me, 16 years after 
I'm married. Yeah, we can always say, oh, I knew right away. Yeah, it's very nice for you to be a, a Monday morning quarterback, as they say in football, since we just finished the Super Bowl. It's very nice for you to be able to say that. But is it true? Yeah, you can say that three years later. Did you know right away? If you ask me today, if I'm, a, if I'm, a, I'm having a first date, do I know right away? No. So I think that you may not know when it's the right person. You, you will know at some point, and some people will never know, and it's gonna be a risk no matter what. It's always, there's always vulnerability and risk in everything we do, but you wanna make the best choice. You wanna make the best decision and voila. What if we don't have self-confidence and all when we have a big crush? Oh, it's so sad. So I really feel for you. So you have a crush on someone and you don't have the confidence. You gotta look in the mirror and close your eyes and say, I can do it. I can do it. Figure out a way. It's okay. Figure out a way. I don't believe, I don't believe in I can't. Okay, every single one of us in this room has been through incredible struggles in our life. And don't tell me, oh, no, you know, maybe, you know, you know, I know. I could see it on your face for those of you whose faces I can see. And for so those of you I know, I know. We've all been through a lot. If you have come this far in everything you've done with all the struggles in your life, you're telling me really that you can't get the self-confidence to be able to go over and make a move? You can do it. You're scared. Obviously, hopefully you want to be scared. This is, this is a real thing. This is real life. But it's in your hands. You can do it. You have the ability to do it. And I have seen so many people. I'm not just saying this to be a, I don't know, some motivational speaker. I'm saying this because I've seen people. So many people do it. You can do it. You have the ability to do it. You've been through so much in your life. Just like you've been through that, you can, be, you, you can get through this and just muster up the courage and you can say to the person, you can go over to them. And you can say, or you can email them today. We, you know, it's great. You have all these, you know, you can text them. You can call them and say, I don't know how to say this, but I would love to get to know you. And just be honest, say the thing. I don't know. I, I don't know what, I don't know what the formalities are. Are you interested? And you know what? They may say no, but at least you tried. Because they may say, yes, you got a 50, 50 chance. So don't you want to at least give it a try? That's it. I really feel for you. My close friend, it's another private message, a married to a woman, and his rabbi introduced him to, Mazel Tov. He moved to another city to marry, and they now live in Israel. Okay. I believe what you are saying is true regarding a matchmaker. Oh, thank you. Okay, that was easy. I was getting ready for like this big question and like this existential question. And I was like, oh, thank you. That's great. Thanks for the comment. Okay. Um, can parents play a role of the matchmaker or are they biased? Ooh, that is a great question. It depends on the parents, but I would say, um, you asked me a general question. I will give you a general answer. Nine times out of 10, the parent should not be in the role of the matchmaker because they have a very important role. Often they are the mentor and sometimes, you know, mothers and daughters, sometimes they're even the friend. So parents can play a very important role, but I don't recommend them playing a role of the matchmaker, but it's a great question. Okay. What does it mean when you are ambivalent and conflicted? You are bored, but he is stable. I don't understand that question. Um, I have an idea of what you're talking about, but if you can clarify it, I will allow everybody to unmute in a second. I just want to get through some of these other questions and then we're going to, we'll, 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 we'll go into the unmuted part of the conversation. Okay. If you see a woman in a restaurant or cafe who catches your interest, what kind of opening question would be appropriate to ask um, if you want to go over and meet her? Not you take my breath away. You know what? I'm not a woman. I've never been in this situation. I have spoken to a lot of women who have been in this situation. My feeling is that most people are just open and honest and just go over and say, I was wondering, are you single? 
That's it. Like anything else, you got to make a move. You don't have to say, take my breath away. Come on. Well, it's not the movies. This is not over dramatic. Just go over and say, are you single? I think they would have no problem. Either they're going to get a kick out of it or they're going to say, yes, voila, happy birthday. If you see a woman, oh, sorry, that was okay. I also 100% believe that when you are for real ready to marry, you will meet someone. Thank you. Thank you for that vote of confidence. I wasn't sure that I was, what I was saying was 100% correct, but now that you told me, I definitely agree. So now you said it and not me. Do you believe in ultimatums? <laughs> ah, I like that word. Needed to get more time and wanted to get engaged after a few times, so he moved on. So you gave him an ultimatum, I'm assuming, and he wanted to get engaged. I would say, and this is my own experience, I'm just speaking my own experience, and I have recommended this before, but if you, instead of giving him an ultimatum, why don't you propose? Look, it's a world of equality. Why are, if it's right, it's right. Maybe he just doesn't know how to propose and he wants to make it special and who knows? Just propose. You don't have to get down on a knee, just say, come on, this is going well, you wanna marry me, happy birthday. Why? It's a world of equality. Think I'm crazy? I want to tell you, okay? So a few months ago, somebody comes to me. This is not a few months ago. By the way, whenever I say a few months ago, I mean pre-corona a few months ago. So a year and a few months ago, somebody comes to me and she's like all flustered. Like, when is he going to ask me already? We're dating for three years. When is he going to ask me already? So I said to her, why don't you ask him? If you're so flustered, why don't you just go and ask him? Oh, no, no, I can't do that. I mean, he's got to ask. Come on, the guy's got to ask. Why? Come on. First of all, I know you. You are a strong, confident woman. And the kind of person, I know the person you're dating, he's not as strong as you. You anyway wear the pants in the house. So ask him. She's like, you're right. So she went and asked him and he said yes. And they got engaged. That's it. It's that simple. It's not so complicated. I just wish that I could just take the whole game, the gamified element out of dating, and throw it out. Like enough already with the games. Let's just be real and come on. If one thing we've learned from this time, this year of COVID is just to be real and say the thing and just get rid of all the, all the extraneous things. That's all I'm saying. My gosh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in some of the private conversations that are going on while I'm talking. Anyway. What if the opposite of what you said, like if you're not good at talking behind the screen, like I have nothing to say to a telephone or you hate texting? I hear you. I hear you. And what I say to you is that is just the world that we live in today. And if you hate it, it shows vulnerability and it shows flexibility and you can say that to the woman. I really don't like this. I don't always know what to say. Maybe you can teach me how to do this. Shared experience. She can teach you how to properly talk and text and maybe she'll like that. And maybe you'll be able to learn something because that's the world we live in now. And there's a lot of really great dating going on via Zoom and via this wonderful technology we live in. Thank God we have all this great technology. Look at what we're doing right now. We're all here safe and secure and able to learn and be able to be part of this beautiful community. This is amazing. So that's the world we live in. Someone asked, what were the three that I said before? Um, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. Those are the three that I said before. And someone else says communication is the key. I agree. I agree. Communication is the key. Okay. Um, Rabbi, I'd love to keep in touch with you. I'm ready to find my Basharat. I'm so proud of you. But I'm living in an area where there's very few young Jewish women who are single. No problem. Just email me, message me. I am pretty easy to get a hold of on a regular day. Um, I'll be, I'm, I'm on all the social channels. 
including I spend time in, in Clubhouse now. I actually am doing a dating. For those of you who are part of Clubhouse, I am doing a dating event tomorrow night at 9 p.m. in Clubhouse. Um, so I'm easy to get a hold of all the social channels. You can also, I have a brand new site, theloverabbi.com, and you can check that out. I've got a lot of good stuff there for you to enjoy. Um, here, I'm just going to, it's rabbi at jewishndg.com, if all of you who need my, my uh, email address. Oh, okay. The person who asked me about the ultimatum said, no, he gave me the ultimatum. He gave you the ultimatum. Okay, we got to talk about this because that was like four questions ago and I forgot the question. Ah, he gave you the ultimatum. So it's about you. You're the one who's being stubborn. Hmm. We got a lot to talk about if you're being stubborn. That's what I have to say. What do you think about real Hasidic dating? They say that you can feel some kind of chemistry and construct love the Jewish home piece by piece. It's a work in progress. Wow, it sounds so poetic. Can you shed some light on this? Can I shed some light on it? Yes. Um, usually that would work fantastic. The Hasidic dating, there's no touching. Also many, many people who are going what's called the Shidduch system, they haven't had that, those many you know, dates and they haven't dated in the secular world. Um, I think it's a different world, completely different world and you can't, fake it. You can't recreate it. So you can't turn. I've tried it before. I, I thought of, I thought of this years ago. You know, I can just like take all the success of the Hasidic dating world and bring it into the secular world. It's not that easy. There's elements that work, like the matchmaking elements work, but not all of it. Not that I know we're looking for the sparks and we're looking for the love at first sight. It's just not that simple. It's not that simple. But at the same time, there's so many things that are simple that we can just do, like take away all the dating game. Just take it away and just say whatever it is. Say the thing. Okay. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, love Greensboro. Do you say y'all over there or you say all y'all? Um, and most of the young Jewish women in the city are already married or in a relationship. Well, guess what? You just said most, which means that there may be one. And guess what? You only need one. So stop friend zoning all the other ones and maybe somebody's good for you. Did I say that too loud? Stop friend zoning. Um, you did say, you did say that a man should pursue a woman and a woman should let herself be pursued. So how does this work with her proposing? Well, you know what? It's not always that easy. You know, there's give and take. It happened to be she was a strong woman and I thought that would be a really good idea for her to propose to him and it worked. She's a person who could do that. Not everybody can do that. And sometimes you're in a space and you have to make the move. So generally, I, the Torah says this, this is very much part of Jewish values that the man should pursue the woman, but it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes the woman has to pursue the man, but the man still, I still think in the beginning, the man should be pursuing the woman, but this was not the beginning. This was where they were dating for a while. They were in a real relationship, a committed relationship, and he just wasn't making the move. And they were going to do what I've called in the past date to death, which means they date and date and date until there's nothing left to date. And really what they should have done is gotten engaged. So when I saw that happening, it was a quick, easy solution. Let her propose. So I'm, I'm not saying that she should be pursuing him and the relationship, he should still be pursuing her in the beginning of the relationship. These were two people in a committed relationship. Okay. Should boredom be a deal breaker? He has some other, um, he has some other good qualities, but I want to jump out the window. So I don't know what boredom is. Is it physical boredom? Is it emotional boredom? What does boredom mean? And why are you jumping out the window? Please, we can help you. Please don't do that. There's people that can help you. Do not jump out the window. So I need you to clarify that. You know, what, what, is, the, what is the boredom coming from? Okay. How do you overcome social anxiety with regards to dating? I feel like we've been talking about a lot of social anxiety tonight. Just take away all of the extraneous, the game. I can't say it enough. And it's not like, well, society is forcing me the game. No, you are in control of your life. You decide. 
what kind of game you're going to play or what kind of game you're not going to play. Just take away the games. Um, I keep you keep saying say the thing, and most people don't know about that. I think every, if you don't know about say the thing, say the thing is just say the thing. It means that just be honest, be real, be authentic, be yourself. Don't think, don't overthink. How am I going to say this? Oh, you know, sometimes people get a text. You know, I, I have some people they're they're emailing somewhere, texting somewhere, rabbi, rabbi. So how do I say it right? Just say what you're thinking. That's it. Be straight up. Thank you. Okay, so it's not that complicated. If you, there's so many emotions around dating. So obviously, if there's so many emotions around dating, you don't want to add more emotions by turning it into a game. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Okay, I think I've gone through all the questions. Now I'm happy. Anybody that wants to unmute themselves, please. And obviously, if you unmute yourself, I want to see your video. I want to see who you are. And you can still continue sending me private messages and I'll even answer them. Anybody have any questions, comments, death threats? I feel like I want to, I want to, this guy, ah, this rabbi. Ay, ay, ay. You know what? Someone's got to, someone's got to say it as it is. That's all I'm saying. Someone just got to say it as it is. Why are, we, why are we fooling ourselves? We're doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. Okay, no questions. Okay, well, I'm assuming the reason why there's no questions is because everyone is so busy in these private chats, chatting each other and, uh, oh, I see what happened. I threatened you to turn the video on so you don't wanna ask. Okay, fine. You can ask privately in the chats. You can not turn your video on and you can ask by video. Go for it. Ask away. Rabbi? Yes. Hi. Um, after a divorce, separation, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you haven't been dating for 20 years. Okay. I, I don't lack uh, self-confidence yet. I feel that the rules of the game has, have completely changed indeed because of the Zoom and, and people, uh, there's a new word, ghosting and, and things like that. How, how would you approach going back to dating after 20 years of marriage? Honestly, and, and, and I, I've given quite a number of talks on this. Um, I think that just be yourself. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you may pick up a couple of things along the way. It's like any learning curve. It's not going to be just like it is, but don't worry. Oh, the rules have changed. I'm now back in the dating scene after all these years. Just be yourself. It's okay. How do you introduce yourself as a package deal? You know, I have two kids. They live with me full time. A how do you approach that? That sounds good. To just say I'm a package deal, I have to keep it. Package deal. Some people are happy with that, especially if it's, look, I mean, most people who are, who are looking for a, a second marriage, they know there's a, there's, there's a package deal there. Most people have a package deal. I mean, that's just the reality. So I don't see the problem. I really don't. What if someone, sorry, because I, I you know, I see profiles online, et cetera. There's a lot of people who don't have kids. At, at 50 and some of them do want kids some of them don't want kids and some of them are happy to raise someone you know raise children with someone they love okay i mean I, I i think that we tend and this is with regards to everything we tend to over dramatize and overthink all of this it's not complicated and i'm only saying is i've seen it happen so many times it's really not complicated just let it be just be yourself do the best you can that is the best you can do really the best you can do thank you thank you for being brave enough to to break the ice now that I alexandra broke the ice can anybody else <laughs> any other questions this is your opportunity yes 
I have Marcel, Marcel? Oh, someone, yes, uh, someone answered my question. Never oh. mind. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Oh, yes. Clubhouse is a new app, and I'll be talking on Clubhouse tomorrow night. Okay. Very good. Absolutely. Okay. There's some more questions coming in by private message. What advice do you give for long distance dating? If I connect with someone who lives in a different place? Well, I think, again, everything is long distance dating right now because a lot of us are not going out because of the pandemic. So I think it, it's okay. You can try. Is it a little harder? It may be a little harder. Try to transcend. Try to do your best. Just be yourself. Come take a shot of vodka before you start the day or something, just so that you can loosen up your, your, your whatever. You know, just be yourself. It's okay. It's not, it's not scary. I mean, it's emotional and it's, it's, it's scary until, until you just do it. I, I, want, I, I want to challenge every one of you to try to virtual date, just try. You never know. You really never know. You gotta put yourself out there. You gotta make the move. If you don't make the move, then you, then you, then of course you don't know what's gonna happen. You gotta make the move. Somebody says, thank you Rabbi for all these good advice, for the good advice tonight. It's definitely very good night. I'm going to subscribe to your website and your conference. Thank you very much. Okay, I love to laugh and make the man laugh but they don't make me laugh. Should this be a deal breaker? Absolutely not. You make them laugh. If they don't make you laugh, so let it be. Come on, my, my, my 15 year old always says, oh, there it goes. You know, she says, I have a rabbi and a dad. That makes the worst two jokes, dad jokes and rabbi jokes, and I have them together. So yeah, so what? Not everybody makes everybody laugh. It's okay, you can still be in a relationship. You don't have to have everything figured out. You see, that's it. We, we end up you know, saying, oh, this deal breaker and that deal breaker because of all these extraneous things. It's not that complicated, really. Um, I noticed a lot of people nodded their head when the last speaker mentioned ghosting. This is a very real problem experienced in dating today. Can you speak about this and how we can deal with it? It's not hard to feel hurt when this happens. I agree with you. I didn't mention ghosting, but now that you you pinpointed it, I will mention it. That's why I love matchmakers. And I don't mean just matchmaker. So there's two types of matchmakers. There's an introducer, like very often, I will matchmake, I will introduce two people, but I don't follow up with them. You know, they're big people and they do it. But then there's another type of matchmaking, which is more of the traditional matchmaking, which is, um, which is where you follow along with dating. So that way the person can't ghost you because there's an in-between person. They have to be accountable. And sometimes in the religious world, that's how we do it. And I think the secular world could use some of that also right now because there's a lot of ghosting going on. And I agree with you, but that's why you need to have someone who's in the middle, who two people are held accountable to so no one's ghosting. And someone just said, everyone is video ghosting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's my less than 30 second answer to this issue. What else? So I was the one, I'm with Gabrielle. Hi, Gabrielle. So I'm the one in the small little state. I'm in Rhode Island and from north to south, it's about 45 minutes and east to west, it's 30 minutes, the whole state. And in this state, I'm not originally from this state, people don't wanna travel more than 15 minutes. If you have to cross a bridge, oh my gosh, that's too far. Meanwhile, I was dating a guy an hour and a half in Massachusetts. Okay. So that Boston is a big Jewish community. And I'm finding if I'm connecting or matching with those people, oh, I don't want to drive all the way to Rhode Island. It's like literally less than an hour. And I'm like, I'm willing to come to you. So that was my comment. Okay, so I'll answer you by saying, yes, you're on the East Coast. So yeah, so it could be because you're in the smaller state. And I've said this to others as well. If because you're in a place that is not, you know, the big city, so to speak, that you may have to start by making the move first. And it seems like that's what you've done. And that's what you're doing, which is fantastic. But at some point, there should be, I mean, one, two, three dates, you know, fine, you're making that move, but then there should be a, a reciprocation because 
we're getting into a relationship. So if that's not happening, um, just say that, you know, that, you know, I, I understand if they don't want to start off that way, that makes sense. But um, going the other way, yeah, that's hard. And so, yeah, and, and by the way, it's a big problem between Canada and the States now, I'm seeing a lot of that, but there's always a way to work. If there's a will, there's a way. There's a will, there's a way. I just think that we so easily put ourselves in this very nice, comfortable zone and say, oh, well, there's no one out there for me. And I'm not saying to you, Gabrielle, I'm just saying in general. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's no one out there for me. Uh, you know, it's that, and, and there's all these generalizations that are going on. No, it's not, it, there is someone out there for you. There really is someone out there for you. Yeah. And I wish you can go to sleep okay. every night. And even though you're alone, you can say there's someone out there for me. And when you wake up in the morning, say there's someone out there for me. And you know what I'm doing? I'm finding the person who's out there for me. That is what I'm doing. I'm going to go find the somebody out there for me. And I know it's really lonely. And that's why yeah. right now I'm doing the best I can to, to not only match, but to create events like these, because I know that the one community that's been left to the wayside is this, what, we, what I would call the singles community. People who are alone, who are not elderly, elderly, everyone's looking after, you know, if you know anyone elderly, and that's important. Mm -hmm. But there's young professionals, people who are successful, but every, every night, or now if they're working from home, they're literally looking at their own four walls every single day. And that mm -hmm. really hurts me. And I really feel it. my heart goes out to you. It does. It goes out to me. It, it, it goes out to you and, and, and it's, it bothers me so much. And that's why I, more than anything right now, I'm really spending a lot of time, a lot more. I mean, those of you who know me over the years, I've, you know, there's, I've gone through seasons where I did more matchmaking, less matchmaking. I am on J Montreal and J matchmaking every single day. And I'm, I'm on an average week now, I, I'm setting up somewhere between 25 and 50 dates on an average week. I've never, ever done numbers like this. And, and every single day takes a tremendous amount of time to set up. And I'm, tr I'm doing this right now because I, I know how difficult it is for people. And what I, the only thing I'm asking in return is to make the effort make the effort to, to get out there. Yes, maybe it's a little bit out of your comfort zone. Do the Zoom dating, do the virtual dating. You never know. This is a, it's a magical time going on in the world now. And, and it's a time that we really, really could find someone. And I, that's all I'm saying to you right now is, is, is don't put barriers in front of you. You have the ability to make it happen. The world is your gefilte fish, and if you're Moroccan, the world is your um, uh, your, your um, uh, Moroccan salmon. The world is whatever you want it to be, and it's all in your hands. And if you decide, and now is great because yeah, maybe you've been working on your career, but there's nothing else to do right now. Stop binge watching Netflix and say the most important thing for me to do in my life. I'm going to put as many hours that I can as many hours as necessary to going out there and finding someone and I'm finding them. I'm not searching for them. I'm finding them and go out there and, and make it happen. And some of you, I know some of you are messaging me. Well, I have a lot going on your choice. It's your choice right now is a great opportunity because there's not so much going on and people are available and they're willing to give it a shot. Um, Ah, thank you. The world is your Dafina. Correct. If you're Moroccan, the world is your Dafina. I like that. Très important. Okay. Uh, I like a virtual date for Valentine's Day. Okay. I'll set you up with a virtual date. Very simple. Just go on jmontreal.com, put in marketing code rabbi's gift. It's my gift to you. And I will set you up. It's that simple. And I've, like I said to you in the beginning of tonight's class, I've added, I'm adding constantly, you know, thank God, as more people are coming on, I'm now putting a lot of emphasis on it. I've been training. I have now a matchmaker training program. I'm training more matchmakers now. And I'm not the only one that's matchmaking now, a lot of other matchmakers. And we're going to try to, um, to do that. The, title, the, the marketing code is Rabbi's Gift, R-A-B-B-I-S-G-I-F-T, Rabbi's Gift, one word. And if you already have 
If you're already on J Montreal and you need a gold membership, just message me. I'll get you a gold membership. I don't want anything to, to come in your way. Someone raise their hand, please. You can speak with pleasure. This is not a monologue. It's a dialogue in every way. Hi, um, Rob. Yes. Hey, how are you? Sorry. Uh, am I still not eligible since um, I'm sorry? Yes, someone. So um, I, I'm assuming the question is, is if you don't have a get, then, or you don't have a civil divorce and you're divorced, then you would not be eligible. I, I can only set somebody up who's available now. It's only fair to the other person. I am available. Oh, then, then you're eligible. But I don't have the get. Oh, then you're not eligible. You need a get to be eligible. Um, I'm married. How can I learn to be a matchmaker? Just send me a message. I need matchmakers. I'm, I've been training matchmakers. If you're married and you want to help me with the matchmaking um, and you have a passion for it, I am happy to um, show you and to show you the ropes because we need, to, we need as many people as we can that are involved in this. What else? I think we're at nine o'clock now, which means that uh, this is, you know, I like to start on time, as you know, I like to end on time. So um, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to wish each and every one of you a tremendous amount of success. I really believe that now is an etrat son. There's a very special magic that's in the air right now. And you have the ability. It's in your hands. You can find someone. You just have to decide, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm focusing on. Not in a uh, uh, a difficult kind of way, but in a real, authentic, be real, be authentic, and Hashem will will provide, and you'll make that physical blessing, uh, a keli, you'll make the vessel, and you're going to get the blessing. That's what happens. When you make the vessel, you get the blessing, and that's my great wish to you. Have a fantastic, fantastic evening, and Hashem should bless each and every one of you, and we'll do this again very soon. We're doing one in two Wednesdays from now. Um, I'm gonna send out all the information, but we're gonna do another one. And I'm hoping that every other Wednesday, we're gonna have another one of these coming up um, as much as possible, because we need this. And thank you. Yes. Uh, sorry, um, yeah. I've been trying to find the Clubhouse app, but I wasn't able to find it's on a lot of, a lot of The Clubhouse app is only on iPhone.